Calibration of the MGC CPFSD spirometer. The first thing you're going to want to do is ensure that the flow sensor is inserted onto the umbilical properly with the honeycomb component of the flow sensor at the same side as the honeycomb sticker. Insert the flow sensor into the calibration syringe. At this point, uh, just a little bit of uh, tips and tricks for doing calibrations. Um, if you're used to doing calibrations on some other brands of spirometers, you may be used to just pumping away, such as this. And on the uh, CPFSD spirometer by MGC, uh, you're going to run into some calibration issues if you do that. The MGC systems require a slight pause at the end of both the withdrawal and the inject. And you will see on-screen prompts that will tell you when to withdraw and when to inject. Also, um, don't hit either end of the calibration syringe hard, such as that or that, making that clunking noise. That causes an artifact to be read through the flow sensor. And it doesn't matter what type or brand of flow sensor it is, that artifact will be read. On the screen, at the top in the toolbar, you will see a calibration button. So click on calibration and that will open the calibration screen. Then what you'll want to do is go to this zero button. Click on zero. You'll see that is now zeroing the flow meter. And once the uh, message is gone, then it is zeroed. In this area, down here, is where you're going to find the instructions for when to withdraw and when to inject. Ensure that the syringe plunger is all the way in before you start. And now you can click on the start button. It's going to ask to do um, different speeds or different flow rates. Um, these lines are simply suggestions of how fast to do them. Um, you can follow them if you'd like or, um, or not. It really doesn't matter. Uh, again, they're just suggestions, but it is advised to do it at four different flow rates. You'll see that it is asking me to withdraw right now and just wait until you um, see the word inject before you start to inject after the first withdrawal. So you can see that I am a little bit outside the, the calibration on the withdraw, which is good because that will help us uh, know what to do the next time. So after each withdraw, slight pause, inject, and slight pause. If you don't do that slight pause, you're going to fail calibration for sure. So as you see, it says calibration failed. At this point, once again, I'm going to zero flow. And I'm going to do it again. Now, the spirometer now has made calculations or changes in the lookup table to adjust that injection so that it will bring it into calibration the next time we do a calibration. If you were doing a calibration and were not doing the pauses um, and uh, you were just pumping away then and calibration failed, it may take two or three more calibrations to bring those values back in because the spirometer took the data from the failed spirometry, from the failed uh, procedure um, and tried to calibrate the spirometer to that. So let's just try it again. So again, withdraw and inject. And as you can see, it's 
coming right in on the line now. Have a successful calibration. At this point the spirometer is ready to be used. Some other things to point out, depending on the model of spirometer that you have, you may want to um, input the temperature and the barometric pressure and relative humidity. Your PFT lab would have this information or there's also apps that you can put on your cell phone uh, that will give you this information as well. As you can see, my office is, uh, is a balmy 17.5 degrees this morning. Um, but uh, this will help with your calibrations as well, make them a little bit tighter. Um, but other than that, um, at this point, you can just say, okay. And you can start.